<sighs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our evening on canine enrichment. I am Joanne with Fur Better, Fur Worse Dog Training. And I'm Lisa Mataska with Canine Defined. Nancy is traveling in Oregon tonight. Um, so she may join us near the end, but um, she's two hours ahead of us. So um, here we go. We're getting some followers in there. Let us know you're there, guys and ladies. <laughs> um, so uh, we wanted to talk about canine enrichment, um, specifically because it's been super warm this year uh, for winter, but I think we are going to have another cold front coming in sort of end of the month and the beginning of February. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to do things outside when it's mm -hmm. gross and cold. Um, and so Lisa, this is totally her jam. Um, so like you guys, if you haven't followed Lisa's canine defined page yet, do it because she posts videos all the time, not only of training different things, but she's an enrichment nerd. So I've actually got some really interesting things from her. So I'm kind of excited to see all the things that she shows us tonight too. So, uh, what is enrichment? Go Lisa. <laughs> enrichment is basically, um, providing different stimulus to your dog. Cause remember from a brain standpoint, it lights up a lot of things and novelty is a thing for everyone. So, Hi. So um, I think what's what's um, important about it. So it became super relevant to me. Um, I start hearing about this stuff. Um, there's a bunch of different things with it. There's books on it and stuff like that. But basically, it's any novel stimulus that you can provide and think of touching the different uh, different senses of the dog. Right. Um, and it became more prevalent in my work when I did more more of my um uh, working with the uh, with the um, dogs in the shelter because they have no not as much choice as our dogs have, so it's super important to keep them stimulated. Now, with that being said, you have to be careful, right? When you give certain things to dogs, if you have dogs that chew things or eat things, you want to be mindful of that and just adjust what you do according to who your individual dog is. Right now, um, for example, I got these. One of the girls from um, that work with us, um, Jody, had talked about these guys, which are really cool because you can either put them on the ground. The suctions don't work great, but you can undo this and then slather the front with, you know, different stuff and then stick it on their kennels. And that's what my dogs have right now, just so that I have some quiet because they'll harass me while I do stuff. Um, but there are different things. And, and in the in the. Um, shelter community, the problem is, is that it has to be stuff that isn't too expensive, right? Because, you know, shelter work. So we do a lot of different paper type of products and all that. And then the day stool program, we try to offer the dogs so much, so many different opportunities, not just mental stimulation and social interaction, but also foraging opportunity to, between sessions and then resting in crates and stuff so that they're able to absorb the information, right? And, and I think what's important about enrichment is that it's free choice. It's the dog's choice to, to engage or not. Um, and then there's other stuff where they talk about free work, where you can put out different things in a room and be like, which one do you want to play with? Which one do you want to do? So, um, but yeah, enrichment is, I think it's an underutilized thing for dogs, right? Because we're so accustomed to doing more training and stuff, which is great. But I also feel like they need a time to relax. I don't know about you, but teaching and working with dogs or doing whatever job you do is super difficult, right? And you just want to come home and be and do whatever it is that makes you feel more comfortable. So, yep. And I think, you know, we've all been sort of since COVID, right? Perusing Facebook and reading new things. Um, and, and if you've been out there at all in any of the new studies, what, who was the group that did that? Uh, it, anyway, they, they did a study on walking dogs. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And it was, it was like a leash study. And, and basically what they were finding was um, the dogs shaking themselves off, right? Actually lowered blood pressure and stress levels, as did sniffing. Right. So now, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, we, I'm sure... <laughs> 
the trainer groups here, right? We see all of the all of the posts all over Facebook, and that is the new big thing is like going on a sniffing walk. What do they call them? Uh, sniff. sniff yeah. Vendors or what? Are, anyway, somebody called. They have different. They have different kinds of names, but it's pretty much the same. And what's interesting, right, right is that if you have an opportunity in a safe environment let me say that, where you can do more off-leash stuff, the dogs have freedom of choice, right? And it does. It's really good for them. I mean, like, and I do that. Like, today was a crazy day. Yeah, sniffer, sniffari. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thanks, Lori. Um, <laughs> but, like, my yard is a mud pit. It is, right? And so I have a section that's that's um, all um, blocked off. And then I have other. So when my dogs are well, uh, old enough to understand to stay with me or stay engaged or whatever, or not go off too far, I'll take them out. And that's what we did today because I was like, I don't want you running in the mud. I'm sick of wiping paws and dealing with that stuff. So we went and we played ball and did some stuff and they had free choice to do what they want. I threw some cookies out in the grass. So yeah, it's pretty cool when you get to do, if you have a chance to do that. Yep. And, and don't think it has to always necessarily be outside on a walk, right? I mean, I have a facility, a brick and mortar facility, which is super cool. But, you know, when I want to work my dogs after everybody goes home, um, Noah, my Vishla, one of his most favorite things to do is to come out while I'm sort of getting things ready. Mm -hmm. And he just loves to check out the kennels. Who was in here? Who was in there? What did you have? Are you a girl? Are you a boy? And that's like, his, I mean, he just enjoys that so much. And and I'll tell you, I used to get kind of like, stop it. Come over here. We're going to do some work. Right. And I, I, why? Right. He works so much better after the fact. Now, should he be able to come away and do something if I ask him? Yes. And he does. Um, but now I'm like, he enjoys it so much. It's part of his evening. So why not let him do that? Right. Why do we feel the need to put so much control sometimes on our dogs and not allow them to just read a book, right? It's like what we're doing, check our phones. I mean, that's what they're doing. So um, when I see just how, how excited he gets to go out and see who was where, um, it's, I just, I love letting him do it now. So. Well, it's, it's really cool because then once they're ready, they're like, okay, I've, what are we doing now? It, it totally is like a mindset clear, right? Yes. It's really yep. cool to see the dogs when they have that opportunity. And um there's so many ways to do it. And I don't think that, I think you can get creative, right? So I don't have a building, but I'll do stuff in my house and I'll have them sniff. I'll set up things and they're like, oh my gosh, it's sniffing for food stuff. It's great. Or what have you, or I'll put different scents out. So I think we can talk about touching the various senses, like how to do that, what to do that uh, with. I mean, there's so much information. There's a, um, gosh, I can't remember name, free work, um, where you actually have different things out. And I like the snuffle mats too, but I also like the other, their mats that have different contraptions where the dogs have mm -hmm. to either open them or push in or flip open the little flaps type of thing. Um, those are pretty cool as well. Have you, have you experienced any of those, played with those? I don't have them, but I will tell you like Amazon's been selling them. They mm -hmm. are calling them snuffle mats, but it's, it's more so like puzzle meets snuffle mat. Right. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm assuming most of you know what that is, but if you do not know what a snuffle mat is, um, it was originally a few years ago, people created them and think about like the dollar store. Um, she's going to show you one. Um, the dollar store mats for your sink where they're kind of plastic and they have the little square holes in them and people were, um, nodding, uh, fleece through them. And so they were making, you know, kind of two inch. Yeah. That's one of the puzzle. Kind of like this. And then the puzzle side. Yep. Pretty cool. And you can just stick the different things in, you know, and of course, if you have a dog who's super destructive, obviously you're going to pick something a little more like this is, I don't know, some kind of leash stuff. So it's a little more um, interesting and you can squeeze stuff into it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. I mean, the snuffle mats are pretty good if you have dogs who like to destroy or pick apart. Mm -hmm. And then as they graduate, you can test them with more challenging stuff. But pretty cool stuff. Yes. Uh, Stephanie had a question. Yes, these are all um, recorded live, and then you can find them on any of our pages uh, soon after the recording's done. So, um, so you'll hear us talk kind of a lot about sniffing because I feel like that's sort of one of those things that, that the dog owns, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, they have the autonomy to, 
sniff what they want. And it's usually things that in training or, you know, if we're on a quick little walk, we don't give them the opportunity to do. Right. And it's so, it's such a sense for them. That's so powerful that we sometimes forget because we don't use it in the same way. And I think one thing to note too, like going for a walk is different. Like we're not, the dog, dogs truly, their locomotion is not our pace, right? So we do a lot of restriction on a leash, whether we mean it or not. And sometimes, you know, it's, you know, for them to really get out the energy, you need a little more um, independence from you in a way or putting them on a long line. So when I, when we work with dogs and stuff like that, and we're working towards off leash skills and so forth, we'll end up um, using a long line until the dog becomes a little more trustworthy. And, uh, and for me, I'm in a good spot where I don't have a lot of traffic going around me. So it's a cornfield, a house, a cornfield, a road to get to the next house and a house in front of me. So, and I liked it specifically for that. Um, but yeah, if you can, you know, think about that because sometimes we go for walks and we're in a hurry, we got to get this walk in and we don't really give our dogs the autonomy to do it. I think your dogs, dogs would be much more well um, feeling much better about stuff if they had that opportunity to really check stuff out. Yep. Um, let's see. One of the things that I just gave <laughs> somebody who it was actually more a little for reactivity because their dog, uh, I did a private yesterday and their dog is just now two and has got into the habit of every time he goes outside, right? He announces his presence and he's kind of on alert, um, in the neighborhood. So he, he peruses the fence line, does the perimeters. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that it's really hard because, as dog trainers, and I know I'm sure Lisa will agree with me, we don't see stuff most of the time until it becomes a problem and usually a bigger problem, right? And so how that stuff gets to where it is, is you see something and you're like, oh, they're just a puppy or, oh, they'll grow out of that or, oh, it's not that bad. Well, especially as puppies and adolescents, um, you've heard of us talking about, they form these neuro pathways, right? So similar to when you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Do you have a routine every day? I do, right? Let the dogs out and make my coffee. I do the things, right? And so, yeah, you can alter that, but it's weird. So we're very habitual as our dogs. So even if it's bad behavior, when they learn to do something every single day, it's that's what we do. When I go outside, now I bark and I check the fence and I'm on alert um, and they don't know how to do anything else. So one of these kind of pieces of enrichment I said was, you know, just take a handful of even it's kibble or treats or something, you know, and use your deck, first of all, because sometimes dogs have a little trouble finding things in the grass. It's just a little too much. Um, but then get him used to like, hey, when you go out the door, I'm chucking something so you can see him fly and fall. Go hunt. Right. Go find that stuff. And so what what we're doing is giving him something cool to do, but we're also breaking that pattern, right? So instead of going outside and the first thing I want to do is bark and check and bark at the neighbors and all of those things. Now I'm like, are you going to throw the food? Are you going to throw the food? I'm going to go outside and hunt that stuff. Um, and just like breaking a, a regular habit, right? Eating sugar, smoking, any of those things <laughs> takes a long time. Yes. Um, but how hard is it to really be like, okay, I'm going to open the door. <sighs> Right. You know, you throw your food out there and then the dog gets excited and starts to do that instead. And then it also reduces some stress, that sniffing, mm -hmm. that hunting for food, right? So now that particular dog is not going to be so ready to go, ready to engage. Um, we've, we've reduced a little bit of that stress just in that simple food hunt. Right. Um, and um, I think, yeah, and that's a great idea. I mean, you know, yeah, doing it on the different kinds of surfaces are really important, right? And the deeper the grass, the, the harder it'll be for the dogs and stuff, but it's really cool. And um, Suzanne does the, um, you know, go hunt using as a kind of a tool to help when the dogs are becoming reactive, like you said, on a leash and so forth. I've seen her do that. Um, so I think that's pretty cool stuff. But, you know, when you're like, I don't know about you. I mean, I don't take my dogs for walks just because, I mean, we, we talked about that before, just because I have um, trust issues <laughs> so, uh, with other people not really understanding who their dogs are and so forth. But um, 
But yeah, you can do this in your yard and like Joanne was saying and stuff like that. And the other thing too, if you do a little bit of for forward thing, forward work, uh, meaning like you go and you put stuff on the fence posts, even if it's a visual difference, it can draw attention. They're like, what is that? Right. So I've done some of those things as well to try and help redirect the attention to something that's more appropriate. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's just really underutilized. I think it's stuff that really can help us help the dogs kind of like decompress and also kind of bring everything together in terms of what they've learned or how they've experienced their world. So I think it's really important stuff. Um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say another game. I know one of my dogs really, really enjoys and it seems silly. Um, but if I am walking and I will actually usually use it on a long walk back from a nose work search, if I'm at a trial or something, um, but you can use it on a walk or anything. He likes the chase, right? He likes to chase moving things. And so I will take little pieces of food and I'll just throw them in front of him on the sidewalk. And he, he sees it move and he chases it and he chases it down and then he eats it and then he chases another one. So it's almost like, you know, hunting yep. um, animals, but you know, he's just, he just he loves to watch it roll away and then pounce on it and eat it. So I get a lot of joy watching that. <laughs> You're like, so. run. But, and then that thinking of the visual sense, right? So we talked about our olfactory sense, thinking about the visual sense, the visual aspect of it too, novel items. Like there are times like, um, even like you can put out something new, right? And, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it out for them to engage with it and en encourage them sit and watch mm -hmm. be, be the detective what does your dog like what don't they like what bothered them will they go back can they recover stuff like that you know i think a lot of times if they don't do it we're like oh, all insulted i'm like maybe they're just not ready for some reason right um but um also like a flirt pole now you have to be careful with the flirt pole because if you wing it too high the dog is inevitably going to jump and land improperly and you don't want to injure them but I was doing a flirt pole with Riff. I mean, I think um, Dr. Kim Julen, who's on, did it with her new Papillon she has, and he loved it, but it's on the ground, right? And I think also like, like even playing tug is, is a form of enrichment, right? But you have to know how to play it. So most of the time people are trying to like stick the toys in the dog's face and I'm like, no, 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 that's not how it happens, right? Yeah, he does love it, doesn't he? I know, Riff was going nuts. I'm like, okay, that's enough. Because then he started riling up and I was like, whoa, bring it down a bit. So, and I think too, when you're doing more active engagement, what you have to do is you have to give them a pause because they need that moment to kind of stop and regroup. And then you check the temperature. Are you listening? Can you hear me? Blah, blah, blah. And then once I might check that and see if he'll follow, do something else, then, okay, get the toy, right? So the floor pool is pretty cool, but you got to be real careful with the dog. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes that's like three seconds of flirt pole and you got to give them a break because it, right. it, depending on the arousal level of the dog, sometimes you've lost them and now they have locked jaw and it's just, <laughs> it's, it's hard, right, to get that toy back when they get super over aroused. Right, and um, yeah, goes back to body language reading. Yep, so... One of the other pieces, like Lisa said, with, with visual stuff. So uh, when Noah was younger, I remember like if there was an out of place something, something that hadn't been there that I set on a table or um, I got a birthday balloon at one point that I brought in, right? And he's a barker. So he, of course, comes in. He's like, oh, rah, 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 rah. you know, and he barks at it. And I think sometimes when they have that sort of reaction – we immediately want to stop it. Like, Hey, yeah. move, don't I'll move it. Right. And I, and I didn't, I did just kind of sit and watch and he, you could just see those wheels turning, the smoke was coming out of his ears. He wasn't particularly afraid of it, but he didn't know what it was. And so he was working through that real hard. Um, and you know, then he goes up and sniffs it and moves and he jumps back. And um, it was a good, probably 12, 15 minute interaction with that. And then he was like, Oh, okay. Right. Um, and what a cool and that's experience. fascinating. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's fascinating to watch that, right? Because we, like you said, most of the time we're like, oh, you're afraid of it? Don't be afraid. And we get all almost right. defensive, right? Like, oh, my dog has to be good. My dog has to be solid. Well, they're still individuals, accept them for who they are, right? And they, and again, like you said, it might be, it also could be a sensitive time. I remember, um, God, I don't know what it was. I put something in the middle of the room and Pandora comes out and she's like, what is that? 
and she skeeters around it and so forth. And, oh, I don't know. And I just walk past it. And then finally she's like, okay, it's a thing, whatever. You know what I mean? I, I think it's important to, to pay attention to that aspect of it. Yeah. And, you know, just changing your verbiage a little bit <coughs> so people understand, like, even if it's not, I want my dog to be right. Sometimes, sometimes don't help them. Right. Right. And I don't mean like hanging them out to dry. If they're truly afraid of something, I'm going to support you. But if they're really just a little hanging back and trying to check it out, sometimes you coming in being like, it's okay. What is this? What is it? Right. When you do all of that, you're putting way more stress on the dog. So I I am a snake person. So I always like to go back to kind of the snake example because I love them. But right. A lot of people do not. And so if I was like, no, she's fine. Just look, look, check her out. Don't you want to see? I promise she's friendly, right? Even if you were my best friend, right? I'm not helping you. You're like, could you just back off a minute? Like, I'll be okay. Just why don't you put her away and let me sit in the room for a second. Um, So trying to help sometimes can be a little too much for the dog. Um, And so that's kind of what we're talking about. As long as they're not really having a moment shutting down, like you see some panting or shaking or really avoiding that area um, for a prolonged period of time, just watch. The, um, and I also think what's interesting. So um, we have a dog we're, we're working with. It's a border collie and she's super visual and wants to play ball. And so I think this is interesting. I po- it was on my Facebook. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, share in a sec. Um, but what happens is um, we were trying to get her to the point where she could use her nose And um, what we did was we took cones and kind of tilted them and then put a ball in one of them. We had three out. And what happened was they, um, it took her a bit to figure it out, like where it was and stuff like that. But um, when you try to change the dog from, shift them from a different sense, it's really fascinating to watch them sort that. Um, Let me go ahead and see if I can pull it up. Uh, and it was really fascinating because and she was having a challenging time with it for um, there was some auditory stuff going on. And I actually posted to listen with your eyes because the um, oh, here it is. Let's see. Let me just see if I can share this. Well, and even a border collie, right? Sometimes they are so smart, but they don't shift gears very well. Once they get focused, if she knows she knows there's a ball and then she sees cones, my guess is she's probably like, what's that? Like, where's the ball? Okay, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm looking for my share button. Isn't there a button or what? Present down on the bottom. Thank you. Yep. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let me share screen. When you change things sometimes when people are easy. <laughs> That's me. I'm like, not so great. Lisa's a herding dog. I am. I'm very bad at that. <laughs> so... Tell me, how come I can't find out where the entire screen? You getting it? All right. Yeah, I am. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to click on, can you see it? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to start at the beginning. So this is a dog. She's older. We've worked a lot with her. She has a lot of, um, she likes the ball. And so we finally got her to the point where she's going and searching for the ball and actually smelling for it. So we've done this a few times and then see how she's like, you want the ball, you got to come here and check it out. You know, come to my hand because she always drops the ball and then's like, go ahead, throw it. So we're just working on a little more cooperation stuff. So Jody's going to go ahead and put it here. And she sent her back out. Watch for some auditory. Do you see that? The head Mm -hmm. flick. And then it almost interrupted her chain of thought because this is a different task for her. So then she gets, she doesn't know how to like sort, right? She kind of got worried and kept looking over off to the other side. And I'll tell you what happens, but then she becomes not able to figure it out. So then we go and help her and so forth. And then we stopped it because then I was concerned about, and I can play that again, um, you know, you want to be careful. Like she needed more social support, right? She was having a difficult time sorting. What you don't know is that I don't live too far from a train and she's an auditory dog as well. And to a point where even though she loves the ball, 
she quit playing because of that sound, right? The sounds interrupted her chain of thought and she had a hard time recovering from it. So then we're like, okay, we need to do it another time. We went back later when there wasn't any um, stuff going on. Um, but then, um, but then we, she was fine. And we actually changed positions. We did a couple things. One, we changed where she was at doing it. Um, but you could tell she kind of stops and orients. She has a hard time kind of refocusing. And then she's like, did it throw it? Did I miss it? Because she stopped thinking. And again, there was the, there was that piece again. And we try to rev her up. And even if you rev her up, she's still not willing to, you know, she's like, no, I need help. That thing's bothering me. Mm -hmm. So the train, um, let me stop the share. There was a train and then the train had, um, you know, she heard it before we heard it because you can hear it hitting the tracks. That's how sensitive she was. And then she offered and looked and there were a couple of head flicks and so forth. When you saw it, it blew its horn. That's when she lost it. Mm. It was very interesting. So, and this is something to me, like in a training moment, I don't want to use something like something she likes if I'm trying to teach something like, I don't know, something that comes to mind, like a teeter, for example, you have to be careful because you can devalue that, that ball as a motivator, right? So, you know, be careful with how excited they are with stuff. But anyway, um, I thought that was interesting. And it, it kind of goes along both lines of reading body language, as well as some enrichment or trying to adjust some changes and how far is too far. Um, so. Yeah. And just because she was willing to continue to go to the cones, right? That's where it's really hard. Cause you're like, let's try again. Let's try again. And she's like, I really need a minute. Um, and you, just you could tell that really in the body language because of how excited she was at that ball and how willing she was to try. And then when she totally moved away from that cone and sat, she's like, just a second. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear. And I, if you would have called her, I'm sure she would have came back just watching that. Right. Mm -hmm. But she's going to be doing, you know, a lot of this the whole time, you know, trying to yeah. work through. And when you're teaching and when you're working with trying to change or affect change of behavior, whether it's a mental state of mind or physical, like chaining, chain, changing um, a, a task or a trick or what have you, um, you can actually, um, you have to be mindful of that because you can actually make it not so great, right? And then the dog loses value in that and stuff. And then it affects your relationship. And those are things that, you know, you really have to be mindful of. I mean, it's it's your partnership there. You got to be able to say, hey, I, I see you, I got gotcha, you, I hear you, and so forth. Um, but I do have some other videos, so um, I, I can share some of that. I looked for my other videos of the shelter dogs with it. Um, it's such a sm small space. It gives me claustrophobia um, to do that too. And this, this is a little bit different. I can share with you. This is what we started to do was um, I have an amazing um, Kelly who is great. I mean, the group I have together is pretty cool. Of course, everybody's going to brag about their their team, which is perfect. But um, she does a um, really good job of getting videos. And then she's updated some stuff on the on my Facebook, on my website, my Facebook page and so forth. So um, I'm going to share that just because some of the stuff we do, because people are like, what do you do and how does that look and so forth? But um let me go back to present and share screen. Okay, got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't do that. I have to do this. All right. So um, we did some videos on enrichment and basically in between, um, you know, boxes. So you can see they're just ripping apart boxes. I think the golden here has um, either a bag or a paper towel roll and they love it. And they're in their crates and they're nice and calm. And, you know, this is after working. And then so we work them. We give them time to kind of decompress. Um, and then we do. Um, let me see can you one. play that one again? But can you make it bigger? Just no. so people can see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, let me let me try. Uh, let me see. Previous. Oh, that's OK. If you have the individual ones, that's fine. Yeah. How's that? Better? There you go. That's good. Thank okay. you. So, yeah, so we have and you can't really see because she's hiding it in her little paw. But yeah, there it is. But it's a paper towel roll and we put some treats in it. And she's like, oh, very delicately rip it apart and eat, you know, eat what's in there. And then the other one is more destructive. So we try to give cater the um, paper type of stuff to the individual dog when we do that. So here's a, um, another pup. And she has a paper bag and or is that a 
That's a, a shopping bag. Okay. So then we put some stuff in there and crunkled, crinkled it up and she loved it. And then you can see to the right, the one destroyed her box. <laughs> so, but she didn't eat anything. She's like, are you still having fun over there? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but this is stuff too, to think about, like, you know, even if they have to be creative for something, give them something to do in the crates. Oh, let me go back and escape out of this. Um, yeah. So, uh, since Lisa's presenting, so Nan says someone's looking for ideas to calm enrichment activities to do with a heartworm positive dog going through treatment. This is actually something you could do, right? So I'm assuming, hoping that that dog would be in a crate, right. To be right. very rested. Um, if not right, then, then this is absolutely put them in a crate. Um, and these are great things to do, right. Bags, boxes, paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls with some, some treats inside. Um, other things like Kongs or topples or stuffed things, yeah. which I know we sort of talked about some of those, I think last week, week before, um, but basically the confinement for a heartworm positive dog um, where they can still enjoy this activity, um, but not really get the heart rate up, right? They're mm -hmm. confined, so they can't really move that much. So this was interesting. This guy, um, he, believe it or not, the little Roddy, he guards. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, we work with it, but here's what he guards. He has been taught to guard things that like, gloves or shoot, you know, things that he shouldn't have because everybody gets in and up and, oh my gosh, we got to take it away from him. Right. So if you get excited, but this is another way to help with that. Right. Just because I give you something. Then he got a little worried about the box. He's like, I don't know. So then we had to break it down and make it into a tiny, tiny piece for him to say, I can put my head in it. And this is just information. So we ended up pulling that out and then giving him something different because that wasn't his favorite thing. Um, and then this guy's like, I don't know how to get into it. So he needs something a little easier than that, right? That's timber. Um, but yeah, so, but these are things to do. And I think um, I didn't upload it, but let me stop the share here. Um, I didn't upload it, but I've done things like that with my dogs. And you can do the topples, right? I love the topples because they're so easy to clean. Um, and then, um, there's other stuff. So it just gets crazy. And then there's puzzle toys and all that stuff mm -hmm. that you can put in the crates with them. Just make sure like, um, one time I put a, one of the puzzles in it and pan broke off. You know, she's why we can't have nice things. She's one of those, but she pulled off pieces and then she like left them out and like crap. So she doesn't get that toy, right? She needs something that stays intact so that I, she doesn't break anything or break it herself. Um, yeah, that's another one. Um, Nan, if, if Nina, if they Google Nina Audison, yeah, uh, not or, or on go on Amazon, you can find a ton of different toys there um, that are also kind of food toys and and puzzles. Um, yeah. So Alice, what happens if they eat it? Well, I mean, ideally, if a dog ingests a little piece of paper or cardboard, it's not going to hurt them. However, right then, if they really are dogs who like to ingest things, I'm not going to give them that. Right. Right. Um, they, they, you know, they could pass a piece of it, but they're not going to be able to, you know, if they eat a lot of paper, if they eat a cardboard box, that's not going to be friendly on their GI system. Right. So, you know, when you are first doing this, these are really um, supervised moments, right? Like I wouldn't do this and walk away. Right. Unless yeah. it's something you can't, you can walk away from, right? Something right. that they can't ingest. So at least a little while. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So th this is funny because um, I, I watched these videos from Lisa and I totally tried the box game. Right. I had some Amazon boxes. And so I, um, I d actually did three different types of treats. I had Charlie bears, I had hot dogs, and then I had a piece of dehydrated liver that I actually put inside of a, sm a smaller box inside of the bigger box. Um, and I put them down for my four dogs and they were like, what? Like they were sniffing them. And then they were like, we're not supposed to crush the box. Like, I don't know if that <laughs> came from years of nose work, right? Because I did work hard to like, don't crush boxes. I'm not sure what happened, but they were like, we can't. The border collie on the other hand was like, I'll tear this up. No problem. <laughs> so I ended up like 
cutting one of them i cut a hole out of the top so they could actually put their face in another one i cut kind of a hole in the side of the box so they could put their face in and they were still like no we're not supposed to <laughs> i don't funny? know what was happening so you know in that scenario boxes weren't a thing for three of my dogs mm -hmm. so um i'll try a paper towel roll maybe or i think a, a paper bag is probably going to be that or the roll will probably be better because it doesn't represent a box so much right and so if, you know, for all of you nose workers out there, if that is your dog is going to be, you know, we're not supposed to do that to the box, uh, you know, use a different option. Um, I remember for my rats, I would fill a toilet paper roll and then I would wrap a piece of computer paper around it mm -hmm. or newspaper or whatever. And I twist the ends and I would put that in there with some treats for them and they would just chew right through the side of it. But um, same thing for dogs. Right. Oh, good, Katie. Egg cartons. Yeah, that's yes. another good yep. option. Easier to get open for dogs that might need a little easier, like uh, Timber, your husky there. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing, too, is like you can do um, the cupcakes with something inside them, a ball or what have you. Um, and I, I think we talked about that, too, where the cupcakes, you can put the food inside there and then put the um, a ball or something on top to prevent them from getting it or just stack it, right? I think in nose work, they do a lot of confidence building, right? For seeing if the dogs can knock things over and stuff like that. You want to obviously be careful. I wouldn't necessarily do that with a huge, a dog who is um, over exuberant. That might be a little much. Um, yes. and but, I will actually show you. So I know a lot, a lot of our followers do do nose work. Um, mm -hmm. But in case you do not, I'm going to show you kind of just how we start some dogs. And this dog um, is kind of a nervous dog, right? So we just had five boxes that were kind of open and there's food in them, one of them. Mm -hmm. So you'll see there's food in this box over here and she's just sort of hunting um, and she gets there and she eats the food and the, the owner is actually just going to put a couple more pieces yep. of food in there as extra reinforcement for the dog. Um, I would normally give the dog autonomy to do this off leash. However, this particular dog um, was a bit of a potential flight risk. So we just chose to keep the dog on leash just in case she got spooked or scared by something. She wouldn't run off and, you know, she'd be hard to catch. So um, that's just another thing you can do in your living room. Even if you don't do nose work, who cares if you ever do it as a sport? It's fun for the dogs to hunt for the food in the boxes. Um and then Rebecca, yes. Uh, if you can find like an old dish towel or bath towel or, you know, beach towel, that's fun mm -hmm. too. You can roll it and then put a couple pieces of food, roll it a little more, a couple pieces of food, roll it a little more, and then they figure out how to get it out. Another one, um, food wise, the Holy Rollers. Have you seen those? Do you guys know what those toys are? It looks like a soccer ball that's hollow in the middle. Yeah. Hollow in it. yeah. And so I've seen a couple of different ways, like people will use like old uh, wash rags, those hand towel type things. Um, some people even tie knots in them. I've yeah. seen other people for dogs that are way more like toy motivated. Um, somebody said, my dogs are toy shredders, which I have a couple of those, right? Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, they shred toys right away. I feel so bad, like throwing them away. So she takes the like remnants of all the ripped up toys and she'll shove them all into the Holy Roller and then just kind of let them shred that toy multiple times after that, which I think is great for some of us that, uh, you know, we buy these toys and then they're gone <laughs> two minutes later. I know. I think, uh, well, I bought different, you know, cause it's good to have different kinds of, you know, smells and textures and stuff like that to be able to get the dogs to engage in something different. There's different kinds of tugs out there and all that. Um, and I got, was a sheep and it was just a sheepskin little tug. And Riff was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then of course he did a little guarding of it. So we had to fix that. So, <laughs> but um, it was, it's, it's a good idea. Like, and I like the Holy Rollers. I've seen people put like papers in it and then they'll put little treats in it. And so then the dogs have to really struggle with it. Again, you want to think about the level of difficulty based upon your dog. So if your dog is first, if your dog is a dog who is not going to um, push through 
and say, this is really, you, you know, I can get into this, that would be something I would consider, right? So then start with something super easy, like you said, with your own dogs. You're like, no, boxes are not good. <laughs> Go according to the dog. Um, there's this really cool other different kinds of puzzle toys that, um, um, that where you can push it. I don't know if you guys seen that. It's pretty cool. Um, and I try, I, we got one for our, for the dogs to do. Let me see if I can share that one. Let me find it again. But, um, basically it's like three tubes and the dogs have to flip it over in order to drop the treats from out of it. Um, and I put it on like, sometimes I'll load up all the toys. I'll put them around the house and I'll be like, and granted, I don't have dogs that, um, get crazy about resources. So, I mean, they, they know how they, they're like, Oh, okay, you can do that one. I'll go do this one. Thankfully. Um, but what happens is, is they, I put it out there and it's interesting who selects what and who hangs out to collect the cookies. The other one, you know, work so hard to get. Right. So, um, it, it's just very interesting. It's really cool stuff. If you give them an opportunity and that's kind of like the free work thing where you put out various options, even different treats, different smells. Think about, you know, changing the smells too, to even like animal sense, depending on, you know, what you're doing. Cause I don't think if you're not out in um, the kind of like nature and stuff, you're not going to smell once a dog smell a novel smell. Wow. That lights up the brain in different places and helps activate that. So I think it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I'm trying to find this one that she did post, but um, did you, have you ever tried any of that, Joanne? Like um, doing any of the, um, um, like different scents for the dogs? Oops, sorry. Um, you mean like, like nature scents? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever um, done anything? I have not, but I have actually recommended to, um, a student, right. Who has a dog that is in love with people and is in love with other animal smells, right? Like that is the most rewarding thing for him, even more than food. He'll eat the food. He's happy to take it. Um, and so one of the things that I did recommend was like, hey, why don't you ask somebody else with maybe a little bit of a long haired dog, um, have them brush their dog and like just bring you a couple of hair. Yeah. Right. And like, put it in a sock or a box mm -hmm. or whatever. And right as a reward, you can feed him food and then like, let him smell the sock all the way back to his crate. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause if that is super rewarding, don't get hung up in the box of a reward has to be food or toy. Mm -hmm. And I think we get stuck there sometimes, right? If the dog said, yeah, food's great. Um, I'm not a toy dog at all, but you know, food's great. I like it. But man, if you asked me what I could do, it'd be you know, smelling where all the other dogs have been. And I noticed it, by the way, I had evaluated a litter of puppies and I had two of the toys that I had out for the puppies. And they just happened to be on a table in the search area. And that dog stopped at those toys and was like, I mean, his eyes were almost rolling in the back of his head. He was just having, you could just tell he was just euphoric smelling that stuff. And so I thought, well, that's interesting. So I grabbed him and when he found odor, I brought the, the toy over and he was like, oh my goodness. Right. And so what does the dog find rewarding? Right. And I think that's a really good point. So Blanc, coming up to Blanca's question about what do you recommend for a dog or a puppy that isn't food motivated? <clears throat> something, there is something that always captures a dog, whether it's the choice to move about freely of their own will, whether it's food, whether it's sight, whether it's smell, whether it's touch. I mean, there, there was a dog. I remember, um, there's a dog we have, he's a puppy and he was so visually excited and he was almost like, I can't think about anything else until you touched him. And then he was like, Oh, there you are. What are we doing? So for him that worked, he's, you know, and he would take the food, but he wasn't fully engaged. And those are, I think if you, you look at enrichment as a way to help guide you in terms of what your dog enjoys, so you can use that as a motivator and get creative because there's no right or wrong. So the question I would have for Blanca is like, is what, what is that? Is that puppy? If given an opportunity, are they looking around and checking things out? Are they wanting to, feel things in their mouth, different textures and stuff like that, because that's something else to think about. It doesn't have to be food. Is it sense? Is it like Joanne said, a sock or fur or what? Now, um, maybe it's the movement. Maybe it is something like a flirt pole or, you know, a toss toy. But 
I'm going to ask you because you said it's a puppy. Where are you trying this at? Right. Because if you're trying this in, in training class and the puppy doesn't want to eat food, you there's really need to make sure there's not an anxiety piece to that where the puppy's worried. Right. So if you're in your living room and this puppy's really comfortable in your house and they're still not food motivated. OK, now we know a different story, but just because they're not in class, very into people, cars and sounds. Emotion and sounds and people. OK, so maybe a flirt pole or a moving toy to play with toys. Yeah, one of the ones that's super interesting. Uh, gosh, are they giggle giggle balls? Yes, I got one. I got one. I put in my house, and my dogs are like, "Who cares?" And it's giggling and rolling around. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. yeah and I, so, there's, an, there's another one that does light up. It giggles, yep. and then it has the tail. Oh and that's yeah. The one I tried, and my dogs are like, "That's stupid." I'm like, "Weirdos." Okay, so we'll try it with someone else. <laughs> yeah, and they do make um. What do they call them? Talking toy. I'll try and find out. But yeah. they have ones where like instead of a squeaker, there's a little box inside. And if you do it, one of them like moves like a cow or tweets like a bird or oh, squawks like a chicken. Um, but yeah, the, the giggle ball is usually something super new. So dogs that are really um, into sounds that they, they kind of oh, they really like to play with that. And they kind of push it a little bit. And then if you roll it, they'll chase it. Um, so explore that one. Um, Definitely. yeah, let me show you this really cool puzzle toy. Um, and then I did it with my dog. So, okay, here I am share and then we'll go to Facebook. So I don't know if anybody else has seen this, um, but these are pretty cool. So if you look at the top, um, there's a screw cap and on the screw cap, she's got it little, uh, it's the smaller holes. So you can do bigger holes. You can take the cap off altogether. So if the dog's having a problem and then they have to figure out and he's trying to sort, he's like, how do I get the cookie? Um, but it's really cool to watch. And then he gives up. He's like, I don't know, but she's in a crate cause she knows how to do it. <laughs> and so this is Loki and Loki's like working his way through it. What's interesting is when I, I did this with Ivy, I didn't make it too hard but she'll take it at that point and push it forward like he was just doing to dump it out. She holds it. I should videotape it. It's so cute. She'll take it and hold, he figured it out with his paw, but she'll take it and hold it with her chin and push it. And then if it doesn't come out, she pushes it further. It falls out in front of her. Then she goes around and gets it. I mean, I think there's a more efficient way, but that's the way she's figured out how to do it. But this is a pretty cool, and I've seen other ones that they've made with, um, have you seen those, Joanne, where they've made them with like, um, Empty pop like, bottles. bottles and stuff. Yeah. I have water bottles, pop bottles. Yep. yep. Um, Kimberly, where do you get this toy? I believe that particular one is a Trixie toy, isn't it? Um, I don't remember, but I got it on Amazon. Okay. So there's there's two of these, and I'm not saying that there's not more, oh, but yeah. there's two companies that really make a lot of the puzzle toy, like the true like sliding drawers and opens and different levels. Yeah. Nina Audison is yep. one of them. And the other one is a European based company called Trixie. Um, and you can find both of those on Amazon. Chewy probably has some of them as well. Um, yeah. If you just Google Nina Audison or Trixie, you'll start to see a bunch of sites that come up. Um, Amazon has had the Nina Audison toys on sale for quite a while. And some of the lower level ones, you can get them for almost, you know, five, $6 now, which right. is great. And they're, you can undo them. They're plastic. You can put them yes. in a the dishwasher. Yes. That's what I like about them. I know that's because I got some of the wooden ones. I'm like, I don't like these as much. How do you clean them, right? But then when they came out with the plastic ones, I'm like, this is perfect. Um, and another thing too, um, this is something else you can think about. And I did this and they did, they hated me when I did this for a CWAX trial for nose work. Um, it was around Easter. So I used the little eggs, right? And um <laughs> The dogs kept getting obsessed with knocking them and rolling them and stuff. But that's another option, right? So if you have a dog who's like wants to do that, you can get the little eggs and put treats in them um, and then put them around the, the out in the yard where you have a little more space for the dog to run through and check them out. Um, it's a pain in the butt to clean up. But, you know, depending on the day and how much fun, how much uh, t how much you want your dog to be tired, you can do a lot of them. Right. But that's another idea of try to get creative with some of the fit, go to the dollar store and try to use some of those things, provided your dog isn't, it doesn't like to ingest things. Right. Right. So I will show you one more. And this is, um, 
didn't really think of it originally as enrichment. However, it, you can use it as long as you're careful about it. Um, so what it is, and this is my foster dog, Roscoe. So uh, we sort of experimented. These are um, essential oils. Okay. And they're pure essential oils. I did get them from a, a good quality company. They're not doTERRA. Um, but you know, I, I had actually about five of them set out and he kept going to these two. Um, and so without getting into all how aromatherapy works, right. He sort of picked these two. So I took the others out and I just left them and he's pretty much yeah. he laid on the floor like that for about 15 minutes just with them kind of that close and he's doing other things and he's chilling out. Um, but you know, he laid around for quite a bit and then he finally was like, Oh, he got up beyond. He walked away. So he was done with them. Yeah. So, you know, I think these were lavender and eucalyptus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if you know this particular dog, um, he mm -hmm. is a very nervous dog. Um, he's so much better now, but when I first got him, he, um, you know, he was pretty nervous and he's really auditory and he's kind of visual. And so anyway, so uh, the lavender, of course, just to see if he liked it to kind of help him chill out. And, you know, eucalyptus can have some health benefits, blah, blah, blah. But he picked them. So um, if, if you're interested in playing with, you know, aromatherapy oils, essential oils, um, I just kind of had them about. I don't know, 12 inches apart, just around the floor. And so he kind of went up to one and he licked it and he kind of hovered over it for a minute. He kept going back to that one. He passed over two other ones. He liked the fourth one. And then the fifth one he didn't care about either. So I took those two, I put them together and he just laid right down. Hmm. So, Interesting. you know, it, it does have other properties of course to it, but to, he had never experienced those different smells before. So it was something that was making a difference on his brain. It totally chilled him out. Um, so, you know, just make sure if you're ever going to use those aromatherapy oils, you don't use them in a crate. The dog has the ability to walk away because they, they do have a moment where it, that's enough. Right. And so the dog needs the autonomy to be able to leave mm -hmm. and say, okay, I've had enough of that. Animal EO makes a wonderful essential oil products. Yep. Yep. I don't know where I got these from. Living. I forget. Young Living. No, not Young Living. It's a company out of Arizona. They make, mm -hmm. they make, and I got like a little sampler packet. Um, so they're, they're tiny, but yeah. um, I can check if anyone's interested, but. Yeah. And you want to think about like, you know, just keeping things safe regardless because size is an issue, right? I mean, for example, um, the Rottweiler who does guard, you know, he, I have to be, we have to be careful what we give to him, like in terms of whether he'll ingest it or, you know, if he's going to snatch it and go type of thing. Um, and then, um, you know, in the crates, all these dogs are comfortable in the crates. So we use this as a form of not just relaxation as well, but then an opportunity to kind of get their mind on something different and rest up for the next session. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot you can do and you can get creative. Like the towels are awesome. Um, socks you can do. If your dogs get super awesome about ripping apart shredding boxes, I've heard of people using like duct tape to make it harder for them. Um, um, so there's so many different ways, right, to handle that. And the other thing too is it in the boxes, it can be treats, but it also can be smells. You can take a little swipe of, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of, lavender oil, maybe just put a little tiny uh, tip on it, right? And then have that scent and then put it in the box. And then if the dog wants to go into it or not, you can do it that way as well. Um, also cream cheese, like you can use smear some cream cheese on it and make it like a fun box, not just different, all different things, not just treats, but it could be other things as well. Yep. Thank you, Ronnie. Yes, that is exactly where I get them from. Ah, Still okay. point aromatics. <laughs> so. Great. All right. So I think, you know, one of the basic things that we wanted to do here was there's 101 things that you can do in your house the, with, with stuff you already have that potentially you're going to recycle or throw away or, you know, um, just 
you know, the foster dog, Roscoe, the foster dog I have, one of his favorite, favorite things to do is to shred cardboard, which is hilarious because he wouldn't go into the box to save his life. But <laughs> if you give him a piece of cardboard, he will sit there for 30 minutes and he just, just pulls Pull off little pieces, pieces little, bits of carpet. It. <laughs> right. And I know as humans, you're sort of like, it makes a mess and blah, blah, blah. I, I sweep it up afterwards, right? Yeah. To see how interested he is and how much he enjoys that, I give it to him, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't eat it. Um, so think outside of the box sometimes, right? Just because something doesn't seem like it's interesting to you, as long as it's safe, um, you know, give it to your dog. Um, what, Petey thinks cardboard shoe inserts are the bomb. Yeah, right? So... And you don't know until you try stuff. I mean, the other thing that comes to mind is for our kinesthetic dogs. You could think about, you know, putting, you know, what comes to mind, of course, you know, the 70s I was born in, but um, <laughs> where they had the beads, right? We have to go through mm -hmm. them. Think about stuff like that. How can I, how, if I were to isolate a sense, how can I affect that? How can I do something a little bit differently with that? You know, so, but yeah, get creative and you don't know until you test it out and the dog's like, yay, nay. And then whatever they say yay to, you can keep the repetition up for that. Right. And then just kind of do different spins on it. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's cool. I mean, I like it. My dogs are quiet now, so I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. You know, another one that I think my dog would love is just filling up a plastic bottle with treats because they yes. love the crinkle of that. So Anyway, you know, don't, don't limit yourself just to things that we think of. If, if your dog's annoying you by like really stuck on something that you're like, oh, I just, I always have to watch the cardboard in the house. Give them an empty box sometimes, you know, if you have to throw it outside, you know, um, and see what they do with it. It's just, it's really fun to watch them explore um, and, and just have the freedom to kind of do something just because we don't think it's fun doesn't mean they're not having the time of their lives. So. I know. I'm not a big fan of the whole grab the neck and fling people around by the neck, but the dogs love it. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? When they play rough and stuff, you're like, Ooh, that looks terrible. But they're like, this is the best ever. Okay. I guess if you don't have just to be make sure both are willing participants. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were, of course. I mean, of course I wouldn't let that happen. But yeah, it's just, you know, things that we consider and just because we consider you should, you know, love this and, you know, this is, this is like sirloin or filet mignon and the dog's like, I don't like filet mignon. You're like, what are you crazy? But, you know, you got to go with what they want. Um, but I really think enrichment is an underutilized um, thing for people to do, especially when the weather is. And I think you see a lot of behavioral issues and sometimes they can be um, changed or directed towards a path of enrichment, mm -hmm. you know, and then try to avert some of those issues from going further. Yep. And, you know, just because your dog really, really likes sniffing, not saying that every single walk has to take three hours and let them right. do those things, right? There is still time for training and not right now, right? We'll come back to that. I'll give you time later. So that's totally appropriate too, right? It's just a matter of, giving your dog something in their day that's theirs, mm. right? So they can enjoy their time too. So. Great. Right. Right. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. This is fun. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I, I'm sure we could have 900 videos, but yeah, no kidding. Um, if you're, if you're interested or you have any fun ideas, please feel free to share them here. Uh, we're always up for trying out new things. And uh, I know sharing the ideas is always good for everyone. That's, Social media is doing a really good job of, sh of all of that now and, and just make it, basically making dogs' lives more interesting. So, Right. Very cool. <laughs> well, have fun, guys. Yep. We thanks, we'll everybody. We'll see how everything, does, how everything goes. All right? All right. And a happy Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. Yeah. So Enjoy the day off if you have it off. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Have good night. <laughs>